I don't know if this is a debate. Rick, I know that you're in somewhat of the stagflation camp, if I could call it that. Ron, are you? No, and, and, and Kelly, I think, you know, we built a graphic to make a comparison between the period in which this particular expression was coined and what the world looks like today. If you go back to the early 1980s, where we had double-digit inflation, double-digit unemployment, and double-digit interest rates, and a recession all simultaneously, that is the pure definition of stagflation as we knew it then. Are we at risk of, it, of that experience somewhere down the road? There are some similarities in terms of policies, supply shocks and the like, but, but, but it's certainly not identical. And so you can see that right on the, on the graphic there that you know, we're, we're, we're very, very different environment here. The unemployment rate continues to fall. Inflation, of course, has gone up, uh, but growth is, is certainly positive, even though it may be slowing down from the first and second quarter. So as yet, I would not just so, uh, I think, you know, easily use that expression to describe the environment we find ourselves in. So if that's the case, I mean, Rick, I guess maybe I'll turn to you for, for this one. Is there any kind of I, perhaps characteristic right now of the current market dynamic that suggests that it could be anything more than just this kind of perhaps passing worry about, quote unquote, transitory inflation? Is there a real sign here that there is something more structural at play than what we're seeing right now? Oh, I definitely think so. As a matter of fact, I can't argue with Ron. All his numbers are correct. It's a static shot. I think what we have is a variant of stagflation. Why? Okay, let's look at declining business activity. Atlanta GDP now, let's show the chart. It's now half of what it was in July, 7.5 then, 3.6 now. And Ron's right. We had 6.3 and 6.6 first and second quarter, so we've slowed. If you look at number two, inflation, I say 4.7 was one-year inflation outlook. Uh, in today's University of Michigan. Let's look at two charts that go back to the years I was born. CPI, headline, core, and Michigan. Do those charts look like we shouldn't be worrying about inflation? And what was inflation pre-COVID? Pre-COVID, is it was 2.3%. It's now 53 And finally, when we look at unemployment, I look at 1 million jobs the previous month, 235,000 the last look. And if I look at what the unemployment rate was pre-COVID, it was 3. 5% versus the current 5.2. So Ron is exactly right. But in a topsy-turvy world where you take an economy, you turn the light switch off and turn it off, then you try to turn it on and you have false starts and delta variants, I think the current trends I've described have really dented the psyche of investors, especially at a time where 78 cents of every dollar we spend right now is creating debt. 78 cents of every dollar is borrowed. Ron, you want to give, I'll give you a final word on that. Yeah, look, I would just say that, you know, the stagflation that, that began really in the late 60s and moved through the 1980s occurred because of a wild confluence of events. There are some similarities with respect to supply shocks. We had the Arab oil embargo quadruple the price of oil, the Iranian hot, uh, revolution triple it. Uh, we had the dollar taken out of the Bretton Woods system in 1971. We had wage and price controls, uh, automatic inflation increases in, in labor contracts. There are some big, big differences. There are some vague similarities. And, and I don't think that, you know, with rates having gone to 20 percent at the short end versus zero today, the markets are discounting stagflation as we know it. It's, it's just more of an uneven economic recovery that is largely been affected by the Delta variant and the pandemic more than any other factor, I would argue.